In this video, I'm going to take a look at an important application of electrochemical cells. I'm going to look at fuel cells. So we'll start with a few key points about fuel cells. So I've got a diagram here of a basic fuel cell. I'll talk about these in a second. So fundamentally, the fuel and the oxygen, so you can see fuel and oxygen, flow into the fuel cell and a voltage is created via an electrochemical reaction. There are many types of fuel cell, but the hydrogen fuel cell is probably the most common and that's what I'm going to focus on in the second part of the video. Fuel cells are different to storage cells because the fuel and the oxygen are supplied to the cell. You'd have an electrolyte in there. Storage cells, on the other hand, or batteries, they've got all the components stored within the cell to start with. And the reason why fuel cells are so important is that they could be part of the solution to move away from combustion engines. So we need to move away from the burning of fossil fuels um, in our transport systems and fuel cells could be part of the move away from that as well as electric vehicles such as Tesla. And the final thing to say is obviously we've got two electrodes in our fuel cell. The fuel always goes to the negative electrode, the oxygen to the positive electrode and this dotted line here represents what's called an ion exchange membrane and the purpose of that is to allow a flow of ions through the cell but it needs to keep the fuel and the oxygen apart from each other otherwise they would combust. We don't want that to happen because it's an electrochemical reaction that's going to um, make the cell work. So like I've just said we're going to focus on the hydrogen fuel cell for the purpose of the video You'll notice I've got the word acid written up in brackets there, and that's because there are two types of hydrogen fuel cell, and it depends on the electrolyte that's within the cell. So you'll notice all these H plus ions already in, so this is the acid version of the hydrogen fuel cell. So I think the best place to start is to talk about these two half equations for the two half cells. So we've got the hydrogen half cell, which is on this side, we've got the oxygen half cell, which is on this side. If you remember the significance of the standard electrode potential values, the more positive standard electrode potential will accept the electron. So in other words, move in the forwards direction. And also, it means that it's the positive electrode. So you can see how all that hopefully ties together. The less positive standard electrode potential will therefore be forced to move in reverse and give up its electrons. So probably the best way to think about it is if we start with the hydrogen electrode, so the hydrogen is going to come in, that would be stored in a fuel tank in the vehicle. Um, so the hydrogen comes in and you can see it's going to give up its electrons and generate two H plus ions. So the H plus ions generated will just become part of this sort of soup of electrolyte. But importantly, the electrons will start to flow around the external circuit. So remember, electrons flow from negative to positive. Obviously, you can see we've got a movement of electrons, therefore we've generated a current. And obviously, that could be powered, whatever that component is, that's going to be powered by this flow of electrons. So if we move on to the other electrode, so the oxygen electrode, so what's going to happen here? The oxygen that's going to be coming in from the air, like in a traditional um, combustion engine of a car, oxygen is going to be fed in, it's going to hit the electrode, the positive electrode, and it's going to combine with the H plus ions that are in the um, soup of electrolyte, and it's also going to pick up those electrons that have come round the external circuit and generate water. So you can see I've got water coming out of the uh, cell as a waste product. So the next thing we'll do is if we derive the overall equation for the cell, and then we can work out the voltage of the cell. So all we're going to do is we're going to combine this half equation in this direction with this one in this direction, which gives us that there, and we can do some cancelling down. So you can see we've got two H plus ions on each side. Obviously we've got two electrons on each side, which leaves us with this as our overall reaction. So you can see straight away the beauty about this, um, this reaction is the fact that the only waste product is water. Obviously in a combustion engine where you're burning fossil fuels, so petrol, diesel, you're creating carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, H2O and lots of other nasty things as well. 
The voltage of the cell you can see is 1.23 volts. Where does that come from? Most positive minus least. Now, it's not a very big voltage. It's certainly not going to power the motor in a car. But basically, what happens in a car is, if you think about this fuel cell, a single fuel cell, as a slice of bread, you can stack loads and loads of them up and generate a much, much bigger voltage when you connect them all in series. So if you think about that as a slice of bread and the fuel cell stack, it's called, that's actually in the car, um, is like um, a loaf of bread with multiple um, slices in, multiple fuel cells. Hope that analogy makes sense. But that's how you can generate a voltage big enough to power a car. So moving on to the other type of hydrogen fuel cell. So this is using an alkaline electrolyte. You can see we've got OH minus ions now already in the cell. We've still got hydrogen going in to the negative electrode, oxygen to the positive electrode, and we've still got H2O as a waste product. So very, very similar to the acid version. Here are the um, half equations for the two half cells. Now, what I didn't mention on the previous version, the acid version, you don't have to remember these equations or the voltages. You just need to know how to apply them when you're presented with them. So we'll just do exactly the same as before. So we'll look at the standard electrode potential values. So we've got plus 0.4 volts for the oxygen one. So that's more positive than the hydrogen one. So just as before, this is going to move in the forward direction. This is going to move in the reverse direction. So essentially the hydrogen is going to come to the negative electrode and give up its electrons. So I'll draw some electrons going around in that direction, negative to positive. And then what's going to happen at the other electrode? Fundamentally, the oxygen is going to combine with those electrons. We need some water as well. And that's going to generate hydroxide ions. So they just become part of that um, electrolyte soup. And just as I did before, let's derive the overall equation and then the E cell, the voltage of the cell. So all we're doing is adding this half equation in this direction to this one in this direction, which gives us that there. And then again, we can cancel down. So we can take the electrons straight out. We can take those two hydroxide ions straight out. And you can see we've got H, one H2 on the left and we've got two on the right. So if I take that one out, and knock that down to one, it leaves us with exactly the same overall reaction as we had for the acid version of the hydrogen fuel cell. The other thing that's the same is the voltage is exactly the same. So why is that? Most positive minus least gives 1.23 volts.